Hello world, welcome to a new video of Luis of Ecuador. I am in the city of Cuenca in a very beautiful sunny day in the sector of Tres Puentes. Here behind we have the island, a popular sector for expats. Well, but I'm on the other side, not so popular for expats, but very beautiful too, like all of the city. But there is the main viewpoint of Turi. That's the park Cajas. Well, this channel is the channel that I decided to open up to talk about to talk about news of Ecuador events, what is happening in politics, especially in that that affects all of us living here, or even people who are intending to live here. My main channel is Bildev Tours. I'm a national tour guide and tour operator. Bildev Tours is the channel in which I post the information about the destinations of Ecuador, about what you should know about culture and nature of the territories, because my goal through my tour operator is to promote Ecuador to the world, including Ecuadorians as well. Of course, always taking into account sustainability of the territories and their cultures. So if you want to know about deep Ecuador, about all of Ecuador and perhaps even taking virtual tours with me, I invite you to join that channel. I decided to open this channel, Luis of Ecuador, to talk about other types of things that are very important but are not strictly related to culture, nature, tourism, but more about politics, news or strong news events. On the Build Up Tours channel, I will speak about events when they affect tourism, mobility in the country, like the strikes that happened last year. And now that we mentioned strikes, for those of you who know about it, Paros, will there be a strike now in 2023? The answer is, <laughs> we don't know. Very likely, perhaps. But I'll let you know. You can also follow me on Vildev Tours social media, in which I will post information live about things that may affect mobility in Ecuador. But okay, having that said, I, I would like in this channel just to speak freely as I walk to the office or as I walk in the morning, whatever, show you the city and speak about the things that are happening in the country and that are relevant for all of us living here or people intending to come to live here. Look the tour bus. In my first video, I talk about the elections, a little bit of how the elections were here. We were voting for mayors, prefectos, what you may know as governors, and there was also a referendum. There were many things happening during these elections. There were candidates who were social media, especially TikTok, jokes, dances, were very popular. Many people criticized this, but it seems like the new generations are moving toward that. Well, it is what it is. The world's going on that direction. I'm doing a video for internet and you're watching me here because the world's going that way. But I don't promise I will dance. I don't plan to do it. I'm very bad at dancing. She had to raise her hand to the car so that we could go walking here because look they don't simply respect this is what they do and you have to be very careful when you walk in all of Ecuador in Cuenca they respect more than in other cities but even though this is Ecuador so you have to be very careful when you're walking on the streets I am not making these politics videos on the other channel because I want to keep build up tourist channel strictly related to tourism things and immigration related stuff but when it comes to analysis, a little bit of opinions, news, I will use this channel. This is a format with less script, just me walking and telling you what I have seen because I like reading the news a lot. I do follow up news a lot. I consume a lot of news. Well, I was telling you that many things happened during these elections, during the campaign. Uh, it is not normal to have this level of violence during the elections and the level of stupidity maybe like on the social media and even and we've got other surprises even one only fans woman who did uh, 
OnlyFans is a social network in which subscribers follow one person that creates usually content for adults and we had one woman that became famous on this social network showing herself very openly of course and now she won as a mayor of a municipality in the province of Guayas. I don't know if it is the first person who after having an OnlyFans account that was explicitly for adult content won a political position but if it was that way Ecuador is making history okay let's quit that talk and let's go straight to the analysis of what happened during the elections we were voting for mayors prefectos governors prefectos what you may know as governors which is not the same as gobernador in Ecuador gobernador in Ecuador is another thing similar but is someone appointed by the president not elected by people we were voting for the council of citizen participation and social control which is a board of people who choose many people in important positions in the country like the intellectual power it is a board that will elect leaders of different offices of the state of the nation and there was also a referendum this referendum was for several things but many people took this referendum as a way to show the support to the president or not about the local elections i'll be talking about three areas mainly which define a lot what may happen for the presidential elections the, these, local, these local elections may be considered a little bit as midterm elections because they are two years after the president is elected the, president term, the presidential term here is four years and I'm talking only about these three cities because these are the three largest cities of Ecuador and everyone will be watching the mayors and prefectos of these cities I'm starting by Cuenca because it, it is where I live and it is where many of you live or many of you intend to live. The run for the election was very competitive. It was almost tied. We didn't know the results until the next day because there were like four candidates were with 15% of the votes each. It was like we didn't really know until they had like 97, 98% who would be the next mayor and the mayor the next mayor which who will start his term in may 2023 is christian zamora of izquierda democratica democratic left the name is izquierda democratica however this party is nowadays not considered too much like a leftist movement and they have candidates of all types actually the last presidential candidate they had that almost win that almost won was not really leftist. Christian Zamora was a councilman, he has experience as councilman, he's an engineer. Well, there was a lot of black propaganda against him and there were a lot of rumors, many things, but this was the same for all the candidates, saying these people is connected to this other, this guy is connected to these other people or these people supported his campaign. We don't really know. The only thing as a, person living in Cuenca that I can tell is that I hope the best for him because his success is our success period as simple as that we'll see if we have to report bad things that are facts we'll do during his campaign one of the main proposals was to eliminate the radars on the highways and the outskirts of Cuenca that are controlled by the municipality he says that because the the contract for buying these radars or the purchase by the municipality was not legally done or was not correctly done but also many people are being affected by the fines uh, and I think they supported him because of this you have already seen a little bit of how they drive here I don't like that type of proposal but many people voted for that he was proposing also a plan of helping for people to get their own houses like he was going to look for terrains 
uh, in all of the municipality of Cuenca which is huge it has a lot of country in, and let's see what he will do but again I wish him success because if the city is good with his term I will be living in a good city about Quito and Guayaquil, the capital city and the most inhabited city. Guayaquil is the capital of the province of Guayas and Quito is the capital of the province of Pichincha. And in both the alcaldía, the, ma the, the mayor and the prefecto, it was won by the former, by the party of the former president Rafael Correa, a leftist president who did many good things for the country, did not so many good things for the country and has as many lovers as haters. He ruled this country for 10 years and there is definitely a before Korea and after Korea in Ecuador. But he's still active in the politics. He doesn't live here actually, he's wanted by the Ecuadorian justice, but there are many discussions about how this trial was performed. But the fact is, he's now in Belgium, he has asylum and ruling the opposition to the current president. If the people who want Guayaquil, Guayas, Quito and Pichincha do it great, I think the person that Korea chooses as the candidate for president in 2025 will win. We'll see what happens. But in Guayaquil something very interesting happened because in Guayaquil during 31 years there was one party ruling the city which was the PSC, Partido Social Cristiano, Social Christian Party. During 31 years they were ruling Guayaquil without any opponent. They were always winning the elections by like 60%, even more, they had high popularity. But the last mayor, Cynthia Viteri, they say that she did not do a good job. I'm not telling you if that's true or not. I'm just letting you know what the voters think. So people wanted a change and they decided to go for Korea's party. When Korea was in power, he couldn't get Guayaquil, but now he got it. Well, with his candidate, Aquiles Alvarez. The Prefectura is with Marcela Guiñaga of Korea's party as well. Again, if they perform very well, in Guayas and in Pichincha and the current president continues as he is, the situation for 2025 is almost a total win for Korea's people. In the whole country, the situation is that the former president Rafael Correa's party, they won most of mayors in the percentage. They didn't win more than 50%, but like among all the parties that exist here, they won most. So that makes them like the most important party at the moment in all of Ecuador. And they won the cities and provinces with the most population. In Cuenca, the candidate for mayor of Korea didn't win but the prefecto did win, so that's very interesting and he won against a, a person who had a lot of experience and had many supporters. Even also this was very tight like they only knew at the next day. The second party after Korea's party is the indigenous party, Pachacuti. They won, they are the second most important party at the moment and they, and both, let's say Korea's party, Revolución Ciudadana, Citizen Revolution and Pachacuti are the main opposition against the current government. The current government, they are not very strong at the moment and also in the referendum, which in a way reflects the support of the current government, the, what the government was promoting, which was the yes to the seven questions, they lost. And not even question number one could win. I will talk about the questions in another short video to talk specifically about that, okay? For the moment, I appreciate you have watched this video and if you would like this content to keep it coming, please like this video, subscribe, share it with other people that may want about Ecuador, what's happening, the events, the news, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see, to talk about, because I'm open to this after walking, after reading and watching my news, okay? Remember to subscribe to my other channel, Build the Tours channel. I'll see you there as well. So for the moment, bye-bye.